we've been advertised into being the world's greatest consumers. We're not, you know, Americans aren't sort of genetically predisposed to being uh, consumers. We, we are, I, I would say, victims of the greatest propaganda system ever devised in human history, which is the modern advertising industry. Something like $200 billion a year spent to convince us to buy, use, and consume. And we've gotten to think of this as normal. Growth is normal. We've experienced it for the past couple of hundred years, and we project that into the future and think that this is normal life. Well, there's nothing normal about it. The United States of America is where everything gets sold. More or less one out of a little over every $3 privately spent on consumption in the whole world is being spent here in the United States. That's kind of staggering. Our job in the world is to buy everything. So we have 4.5% of the world's population, and we do a little more than 30% of the world's private consumption. And the global economy relies on the United States as a consumption point. So more or less, when we ran out of our own money, they were happy and in fact had to lend us our own money back to keep buying because there's no other place for the world to produce, export to, and have do all that consumption. We are that place. In the weird specialization of the modern, post-1970s international economy, we're the consumer of first, last resort for a significant portion of the world. And so they'll loan to us so long as we'll borrow, so long as we'll spend, so they can keep producing. You've got an entire generation that has been brought up in a completely artificial environment where their beliefs have been shaped by television, which is designed to sell things like huge SUVs, and then by uh, movies, which are completely um, you know, disconnected from reality, uh, particularly here, in, here in, in Western culture where you know, the good guys always win and there's always a happy ending and and so on and so forth. And I don't think they understand that everything we do revolves around consuming massive amounts of oil. All our food, transportation, most of our jobs or social niches that we occupy all revolve around consuming massive amounts of oil. So once you're aware that, well, the oil is going to become very scarce, a lot of these social niches are going to disappear, a lot of these things that we take for granted are going to severely contract or go away altogether, and yet you're living in it right now, and nobody else really seems to be too concerned about it, the cognitive dissonance you know, it can be pretty severe. Because in America, we're not citizens, we're consumers. So all we relate to is, is you know, celebrities in the media. And I do think it's sort of on purpose, because if you're an automobile manufacturer and uh, television station A starts running all these programs about all the economic and energetic and environmental issues we're facing, they're not going to get as high a return on investment as they would if they sell ads on another television station that's talking about how wonderful everything is or is only talking about celebrity this and celebrity that. So it's sort of, I don't know that there's anybody sitting around planning. I wouldn't be surprised if there is, but it sort of works out that way that what tends to sell stuff the most happens to be stuff that also turns the viewer into a bumbling idiot. Many people ask 